and welcome to Did Shakespeare. My name is Cassidy Cash. William Shakespeare was born in Stratford-upon-Avon, and after he made his career in London, he would return to the city to buy the house known as New Place. At the time, New Place was the largest house in Stratford-upon-Avon, and this week we're going to explore Shakespeare's purchase and the history of New Place by asking, did Shakespeare have a big house? In 1592, when William Shakespeare was just 28 years old, he was already making a name for himself in London, having written at least seven plays by this time, and he would go on to form the Lord Chamberlain's men just two years later. As his wealth and status grew, Shakespeare turned his mind towards leveling up at home and increasing the standard of living for his family. And in 1597, when he was just 33 years old, William Shakespeare would purchase the house known as New Place in Stratford-upon-Avon from William Underhill. There was a great kerfuffle involved in purchasing it from William Underhill, involving a court case, a supposed murder, and Shakespeare even having to go to court and defend himself. But after the kerfuffle, he did, in fact, purchase the home. And you can learn more about the story of the murder and the court case and how that kerfuffle went down with our episode with Glenn Jones on the podcast of That Shakespeare Life. You can find that inside episode 12 at castacash.com slash EP012. After the kerfuffle was resolved and William Shakespeare did become the owner of New Place, it was not a new house. This house had actually been built in 1480 and was there throughout William Shakespeare's lifetime. So you can only imagine him growing up there, walking past this house and seeing it, and then returning as an adult to purchase it. It was originally built by a Hugh Clopton, who owned several properties in Stratford-upon-Avon. The Cloptons were a well-established family, so there's a lot of town politics involved in Shakespeare's per purchase as well. One writer, John Leland, described the home as, quote, a pretty house of brick and timber. New Place was the largest house in the area, but it was also the only house that had a courtyard. Buying this house was a real mark of accomplishment and status for William Shakespeare. We know that the house had 10 fireplaces, and according to Tudor architecture, that means that the house probably had somewhere between 20 and 30 rooms. It was expansive, and the courtyard contained an extra large hall that had been built in the late medieval period where the family would have gathered. This would have been the main sort of dining room, living room, main family area for the Shakespeare's when they lived there. After Shakespeare died, his daughter Susanna took ownership of the home and took care of it until her death when Elizabeth Bennard, Shakespeare's granddaughter, took ownership of the house. And Elizabeth didn't actually have any children. So when she died, the Cloptons took back over possession of New Place. And when they did, they completely remodeled it. They all but demolished it and, and totally turned it into this completely new house that wasn't anything like what Shakespeare had done. But their remodeled version would last well into the 18th century when their version was again demolished by a Reverend Gaskell who has gone down in history as the villainous man that destroyed Shakespeare's home. Reverend Gaskell became high highly annoyed at all of the tourists that were coming to his house to see Shakespeare's tree that was outside and then the property of New Place there. And he got in a fight with the townspeople. And what ultimately happened is they kept going back and forth, back and forth. And Reverend Gaskell had had enough and he tore down the whole place. So today we don't have the actual New Place or even the reconstructed New Place of the Cloptons. The property is completely gone. But the site where the house used to be belongs to Shakespeare Birthplace Trust. They've taken ownership of it as well as the nearby Nash's house. And that whole property, you can visit it. And they have a great museum there that tells you all about New Place and how it existed. It's definitely worth a visit. Despite the actual house being gone now, there are several historical evidences that tell us about the home. There's one 18th century drawing by George Vertu that shows the house had several windows and it was timbered on half of the house. It also shows us that the orientation of the street had it located opening out to Chapel Street in Stratford-upon-Avon, which is located about here. There was an archaeological dig done between 2010 and 2015 at New Place, which revealed that Shakespeare had actually rebuilt the front of the home and added what's known as a long gallery. Now, a gallery isn't a feature we're highly familiar with here in the U.S., but basically that's a section of the home for displaying your artwork and your special things, and it's also where you would have entertained your guests or had a big party. 
So even though the actual building is gone, we can still learn a lot about Shakespeare's history from the site and the location that's there and the archaeological works that, been, that has been done to uncover evidence of what it was like to live there for William Shakespeare. I will link to several of these resources where you can explore further, including a digital exhibition offered online at Shakespeare Birthplace Trust that shows you at least 24 that I was able to find artifacts from the archeological dig of things that they did find there. It's fun to think that some of them might've been objects that Shakespeare had in his home when he lived there. Of course, we can't know that since several people have lived there since Shakespeare, but they're fun to look at and it's a beautiful exhibition. So make sure you check the show notes below today's video to find sources for the images we share with you today, as well as where you can learn more about Shakespeare's new plays. That's it for this week. I'm Cassidy Cash, and I hope you learn something new about the Bard. I'll see you next week. Don't forget to check out our brand new digital streaming app. It's called That Shakespeare Live Streaming App, and it's available at castycash.com slash experience. This app will be launching officially on June 29th, and you can get a free 14-day free trial. This app includes hundreds of episodes all about the life of William Shakespeare. There's expert interviews, bonus interviews that aren't available on the podcast. You can find behind the scenes video versions of the podcast in there as well, along with documentaries, animated plays, and so much more. I hope you'll check it out and join us inside the app on June 29th. And hit like and subscribe because we're here every Saturday with even more Shakespeare episodes just like this one. I'm Cassidy Cash, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye. <laughs>